Okay, let me show you an example of a, a problem that we might use mesh currents to solve. Um, just to begin with, we'll do an example that has two loops, and then in the next video I can show you a circuit that has three loops. So I'm going to go ahead and put in two voltage sources here. Um, this voltage source on the left hand side, we'll let that be 90 volts. This one will be a 40 volt source. We'll let this resistor be 6 ohms, 15 ohms, here's a 10 ohm resistor, this is a 4 ohm resistor, and this is a 5 ohm resistor. Okay, so let's go through the process for the mesh current method to solve this circuit. So if you recall from the last video, step number one is we want to draw in and label all inner loops. Okay, so I will call this one loop I1, and then um, just for something different, I'm going to label this I2, but I'll have it going in the opposite direction so you can see how those mesh and what happens um, when currents are going in the same direction through that middle resistor. Okay, great, so I've labeled all of my loops. This is loop I1, loop I2. Now for step number two, for each loop, I'm going to write the KVL equation. Okay, so KVL tells us that the sum of voltages around any loop is equal to zero. So my loop equations are going to be for I1, so at loop I1, if I start at this bottom corner and I'm going to walk around the direction of this I1 loop, using the passive sign convention, when I enter in the negative terminal of this voltage source, this is going to be um, a negative 90 in my equation. So then as I continue around this loop, the next circuit element I encounter is a 6 ohm resistor. So this will be plus 6 times I1, because I1 is the only current that touches that 6 ohm resistor. As I continue down, now the next circuit element I'm going to encounter is this 10 ohm resistor. So this is going to be 10 times. Now um, on the left hand side, I'm currently doing this I1 current. I1 is going in this direction, right, because I'm going around in a loop. But at the 10 ohm resistor, I'm going down. Now the I2 current is also touching this 10 ohm resistor, but because of the direction of this loop, at this resistor, I2 is also going down. So these two currents are going to mesh, and since they're in the same direction, they're going to add. So this is going to be I1 plus I2. Great, so I continue on in the direction of my I1 loop. The next thing I encounter is the 4 ohm resistor. It's only touching I1, so this will just be 4 times I1. And now I'm back to where I started, so I can finish my KVL equation with an equals 0. So let me go ahead and simplify this equation. So this is negative 90 plus 6 I1 plus 10 I1 plus 10 I2 plus 4 I1 is equal to 0. And I've got an I1 term here, here, and here. So this gives me negative 90 plus 20 I1 plus 10 I2 is equal to 0. I'll reduce it. That gives me negative 9 plus 2 I1 um, plus I2 is equal to 0. So this means that I2 is equal to 9 minus 2I1. Okay, great. So this is my loop 1 equation. Now I want to write do the same thing for my loop I2 equation. So at loop I2, now if I start here, and I walk around this I2 loop. You can really start anywhere. You just have to make sure that you go all the way around until you end uh, the same place where you started. And the first thing I'm going to encounter is this 40 volt source. So going in this direction using the passive sign convention, this is going to be um, a negative 40 volts. The next thing I encounter is the 15 ohm resistor. So this will be plus 15 times I2, because I2 is the only current that touches that resistor. The next thing I encounter is this 10 ohm resistor. So currently I'm doing the I2 loop. Um, I2 is going in the down direction through this resistor, but I1 is also going in the down direction. Since they're in the same direction, these two currents are going to mesh and they're going to add. So this will be I2 plus I1. 
The next thing I encounter as I go around the I2 loop is the 5 ohm resistor and the only current touching that is I2. And now finally I'm back to where I started so I complete my equation with an equals zero by KVL. So let me reduce this thing. I'm just going to divide everything by 5 to begin with. So this is negative 8 plus 3I2 plus 2I2 plus 2I1 plus I2 is equal to 0. Then I have I2 terms here, here, and here. So this gives me negative 8 plus, so let's go 2I1 plus 6I2 is equal to 0. I can reduce this again, negative 4 plus I1 plus 3I2 is equal to 0. And this means that I1 is equal to 4 minus 3I2. Okay, so here are my two equations and two unknowns. So the last step, step three, is solve the system of equations. Okay, so I get, if I substitute one into the other, I'll say I2 is equal to nine minus two times four minus three times I2, which gives me nine minus eight plus six I2. So this implies that for I2, I get negative 0 0.2 amps. Then if I plug this in for my I1 equation, four times, um, four minus three times negative 0.2, then I get for I1, 4.6 amps is my I1. So um, we have our currents. Um, this is a positive current, so that means that the direction of I1 that I picked was correct. This ended up being a negative um, 0.2 amps, so that means that my current is actually going in the opposite direction to this arrow that I made. So you don't need to be too concerned about getting the arrows right when you, you just need to kind of pick a direction and then when you solve all your equations if you get that the direction is actually the other way you know that um, your currents are flowing opposite to what's in the picture. So let me know if you have questions in the next video I'll show you an example um, of a circuit with three loops.